Welcome to the Six Miles to Supper podcast. I'm your host, Kayla Cox, and I've lost over 80 pounds with intermittent fasting six days a week, eating whatever I wanted at my meals, taking a cheat day every Sunday, and walking six miles a day. And I'm here to help you on your weight loss journey. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how to stop emotionally eating with intermittent fasting. So I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that if you have a significant amount of weight to lose and you have struggled in the past to lose it, you are likely dealing with at least some emotional eating. The good news is intermittent fasting, I think, is the best way, hands down, to deal with this problem. You know, basically every other diet has you eating so often, you know, you're just trying to like not eat certain types of foods. Maybe it's low carb or maybe it's, you know, high protein or whatever. Uh, But basically, you know, you're eating a a lot of different times throughout the day. And if you're dealing with emotional eating, it just makes it really hard to eat the right amount. And plus, there's a lot more room for error because every time you sit down to eat, if you're an emotional eater, it's an opportunity to emotionally eat. And so that just makes it so that it's really easy to eat way too much food. But with intermittent fasting, you have just a clear rule, which is for a big chunk of the day, you cannot eat. That's the one rule. Basically, intermittent fasting makes you face emotional eating and you have to learn to deal with your emotions in ways that don't involve you eating to make you feel better. So let's talk about what emotional eating looks like, because it might be, if you're like I was, that you don't even know that you're doing it. I mean, I had always struggled with my weight from the time I was a kid, and I would not have said that I'm an emotional eater. You know, if you had asked me, I would say, well, yeah, I mean, I think everybody from time to time, you know, wants some cookie dough (laughs) when when they're feeling sad. Like, doesn't everybody do that? Uh, And I think to a certain extent, yes, we all from time to time do comfort ourselves with food, but I think some of us just tend to like latch onto that particular way of dealing with stress and things like that. And I had done that unknowingly. Because the thing with emotional eating is you don't have an urge to emotionally eat. You just have an urge to eat. And so it's not like you say to yourself, oh, I need to go do some emotional eating. That's not how it manifests. It manifests like this. You're just like, hey, I feel really hungry. Let's go eat some food. (laughs) So this gets a little squishy because when you're in the fasting window, it is important to learn, you know, if you're eating enough in the eating window, because you do want intermittent fasting to feel easy, because you want it to be a sustainable thing that you're doing. You don't want to be miserable and having headaches and feeling nauseous and all that. Um, so when you're feeling that that hunger, it can be hard to know, like, okay, well, wait, is this true hunger or what's going on? Uh, did I not eat enough? And I think this is why it's really important that when you begin intermittent fasting, you go slow with it so that your body can, you know, uh, just acclimate itself to the fasting so that you're not in a place where, you know, it's like, wow, I feel super hungry and I'm really not sure why. Uh, Because if you are just going about this gradually, then your body is getting used to it. And so then the fasting window should feel pretty easy. Your body just naturally like gets used to these things. And, And everybody has to figure out how they want to approach this. But here is what I would do. So the way this looked for me was, I, you know, like I said, I didn't understand that I was an emotional eater. And so I had gone really slowly with my, my fasting window, pushing it out really, 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 really gradually. And I would find myself, you know, like maybe 10 o'clock in the morning and I would be standing in front of my pantry and I would be looking for something to eat. And, you know, this was kind of crazy to me when I would snap out of it. I'd think, wait, why am why am I here? (laughs) Because, you know, like maybe at that point I'm not eating until noon and I know this, you know, like I'm very used to it. But I would think, why why am I standing here? What's going on? And that was really helpful to me, actually, to start asking myself, why am I here? Like, what am I what am I doing here? Why is it that I'm looking for a snack when I know that I'm not eating right now? And so I would just, you know, kind of rewind in my head, like what, what led me into the kitchen? And so what I found so many times was that it would be some stressful event led me to the kitchen. So uh, I would, I'd be sitting there thinking, well, what did I do right before this? And it'd be like, oh, right. I, we did our budget meeting. <laughs> and, you know, that was uh, a classic reason for me uh, back in that time 
to go to the kitchen because at that time I was a freelance uh, software tester. Uh, so my income was very variable. And my husband was a realtor also, meaning that, you know, his income was variable. I mean, sometimes it would be zero and sometimes it'd be fantastic, uh, it, but it was not consistent. And so usually what would happen at the budget meeting would be like, well, hopefully these things are going to happen. And so hopefully there's going to be, you know, this amount of money, but it was all very up in the air, which stressed me out. So then what would I do? I would think, well, okay, I'm stressed. And so my body would think, okay, well, you know, one thing that helps you not feel stressed is go eat because <laughs> that, you know, gets your mind off of it. It also actually does calm you down. Uh, eating does help you feel less anxious, at least in the short term. Now, eventually, you know, like if you're eating too much uh, and you are gaining weight, then that causes more stress. But in the short term, Food is really good at its job of comforting. And it's important, I think, to acknowledge that uh, because I think sometimes it's, it's like there's this temptation to, to try to tell yourself, oh, that it doesn't really help me to, uh, you know, to eat. Like, I don't feel better after I eat. It's like, no, actually, you do. You, you really do feel calmer. And I think it's important to just acknowledge that and say, OK, it does make me feel calmer. Ultimately, it's in the long term harming me uh, to use food uh, to calm myself down. So the way I dealt with this was, you know, even though I felt like I really want to eat right now in the fasting window, I would just tell myself, mm, you're going to be okay. Like, um, you know, maybe you didn't eat enough because there, there were times where I'd think, well, maybe I just didn't eat enough at my last meal or something like that. And so I would just tell myself, well, okay, you got to be better <laughs> at the, it, during the eating window about eating, you know, enough food. So instead of breaking my fast early, I would just say, okay, I'm, I'm going to keep with the fast because I'll be fine until two o'clock or, you know, until noon or when, whenever my eating window opened up. And, and then I would just go about my day. So let's talk about some signs that you might be emotionally eating. What I have found is that a good rule of thumb is that if you are eating past the point of fullness at a meal, you may be emotionally eating. Uh, I think it's a good idea anytime you find that you've just overdone it just by even just a little bit, just to check in with yourself after the meal and kind of just go through, you know, what what was going through my head during the meal, what was going on during the meal. Sometimes, you know, maybe a kid's acting out uh, and, and that's stressful and that was what was going on. Maybe there were uh, distractions. Um, maybe it was like, well, I was watching TV and that's, you know, I was just focused on the TV and not on the food and, and that was it. However, uh, even that's a little bit squishier than you might think because because it might be that the reason why you decided to turn on the TV while you're eating is because there's something going on emotionally that you don't want to deal with, that you're using that distraction to keep you, you know, from thinking about it or dealing with it. Another sign is if you do find yourself breaking your fast early um, on, a, you know, like you're just not being consistent with your windows. This is especially true if you haven't really been aggressive with your window, you know, pushing it out uh, really quickly. If you've just been kind of going along and your body is used to it, but you keep breaking the fast early, it's probably because you're really upset about something and you're not wanting to deal with it and it's just easier to eat. Another sign is if uh, you are snacking a lot during your eating window. So, you know, maybe you're being very consistent on the fasting window side, but then the emotional eating shows up uh, during your eating window. Uh, what I found was generally speaking, uh, whenever I had the urge to snack, it was tied to emotional eating. And it's important to remember that emotional eating isn't just about eating when you're sad. I think a lot of us tend to think, oh, well, it's just, you know, when you're sad and you want to eat, that's emotional eating. But it's also, you know, different kinds of emotions. It's about, you know, calming yourself down when you're angry or, you know, when you're nervous uh, or it's about, you know, celebrating you're happy. And it's like, hey, let's, you know, have some chips and some cookies. Or it might just be about creating a little bit of excitement with some food, you know, like it, it is fun uh, and it's entertaining to eat. Uh, and so you, you might just be doing it because you're bored. It's a, just an emotional thing. You're trying to uh, make yourself feel better uh, with food. So now let's talk about how to actually not emotionally eat. Like, what can you do? And I love to keep this phrase in my head, which is a nail is driven out by another nail. Habit is overcome by habit. And so what I have found is that it's much better 
to think in terms of what can I do instead of emotionally eating as opposed to I just need to stop emotionally eating because it's really hard to just stop doing something. It's a lot better if you can put something else in its place. So you need some alternatives. So what are some good alternatives? Uh, I think, first of all, you should realize this is going to be trial and error. What works for me may not work for you. And it's important to just, you know, think about your own uh, preferences and what might work for you. And uh, but I'll share with you what has worked for me. And absolutely, hands down, the best thing uh, for me was to go for a walk. Anytime I felt, you know, like I was emotional about something and that I wanted to eat, just getting out and getting my steps in uh, was super helpful. And I didn't know this at the time when I was doing it, but apparently uh, even just going out for a simple walk, any kind of forward motion, uh, it causes lateral movement in your eye. In other words, you're looking you know, to the left and to the right. And so what that does is it calms down your amygdala, which is a part of your brain that deals with stress, with anxiety and stress. Um, it's, it, it activates when you are feeling anxious and when you are moving your eyes back and forth, it actually calms you down. Uh, which I thought was really interesting. Uh, I didn't know that at the time. All I knew at the time was, hey, I've got this step goal and I need to you know, do something other than eat. So let's go get my steps in. Uh, but apparently there's science to back that up. So if you find yourself wanting to emotionally eat, a simple thing to do, and I know it might even sound too simple, but I challenge you, go try it, is when you feel like you want to eat and you're in your fasting window, stand up and just walk. Just get up and start moving in some way. As an added bonus, it physically moves you away from the food. You know, you walk out of the kitchen, <laughs> you, you walk and go do something else. Uh, and and it will make it so that you're being consistent with your fasting window. And it, you know, that, that physical movement uh, helps your, uh, your emotions just to get back in line. And you feel better. You know, your mood is uh, in a better place and it's just easier to stick with your plan. And what I found was after I had done that several times, I started to realize like, oh, I actually feel a lot better when I go for a walk. Like, you know, if I, and, and nowadays when I feel upset, that's my go-to. It, it's like, it, it's no longer my default to go want to have a snack. It is, I feel upset right now. I'm really stressed about this. Uh, I need to go for a walk. But there are some other things that I've found helpful too that don't require walking. One is to just journal out my thoughts. You know, so if I'm feeling really hungry and I don't want to eat right at that point because I'm in my fasting window, I'll just sit down and, and journal it out. Just write down like what's, you know, what's going on, what's going through my head. Sometimes just writing down the thoughts that are going through my head were helpful. And here, here's the thing, though. Um, I know a lot of people are resistant to this idea, like writing things down. I remember I was so resistant to the idea of writing things down. I didn't want to do it. I uh, one thing I was afraid of was like, oh, you know, people are going to look at it and they'll, they'll see, you know, all these crazy thoughts that are in my mind. So I shouldn't write things down. Uh, what I learned was that nobody really finds it that interesting. Like uh, I, I, uh, I keep journals, uh, all the time now. And, and, you know, you, you, of course you need to tell your, uh, the people in your house, like, this is, this is my journal, please don't look at it. Um, but you can also, you know, if you're worried about your kids finding it or something, you can put it up out of their reach and, you know, uh, you can keep it even locked away if you need to. Another thing that kept me from journaling, and I know this is maybe going to sound a little bit crazy, but I, had it in my head that if I write down the things that are stressing me out, like maybe different fears I have, if I write those down, then they'll come true. And I know even saying that out loud, I think, wow, that was, <laughs> that was a, that was a funny thing to think, a very sus superstitious kind of thing to think, but, but that is, you know, a, a fear that I had. One thing that I would do is I would worry, I would worry about, you know, something happening to my, you know, my husband or my kids. And so Finally, though, I just started to write those things down. Like, I'm afraid, you know, I'm afraid that my husband will get into a car accident or, or, or whatever it was. And once I wrote it down, it was interesting because I instantly became less stressed out about it. I think one thing was just seeing it on paper. And once it was on paper and out of my head, it was just less scary. Um, and it helped me to to be more rational about it, to think, okay, that's actually what I'm worried about. And so, you know, I can look up statistics or I can, you know, figure out ways to improve on it. Like, okay, what are, what are some things that I can do? Uh, because you never can uh, completely prevent things, but you could say, okay, well, what are, what are some uh, steps I can take to make this a little less likely? if it's something I'm worried about. 
I also found talking things out with another person, especially my husband, uh, to be very helpful. Uh, but this was something I came to later. And actually, I think journaling was part of the thing that got me to that point where I could talk things out with my husband. Because before, you know, all these things were in my head and I just like I, I couldn't even figure out how to really verbalize them. Uh, but once I started journaling them, then I kind of got a better handle on them. And then, you know, then talking it out with my husband uh, was nice because when you can talk about things with another person, they can, you know, and of course you want to pick wisely <laughs> who you're talking to, but they can give you a perspective that's different from your own. And an outsider's perspective is helpful. Another thing you can do is just simply do some cleaning. Just, you know, like go scrub your toilet or or your shower. Uh, just doing some sort of activity that is uh, that will keep you busy, keep you out of the kitchen, but that will, you know, it has a benefit because you'll have a cleaner, you know, room or cleaner bathroom uh, after you're done with it. Uh, and the act of, of doing something like that, it gives you time to think. Uh, you know, when you're sitting there scrubbing the shower, uh, you can think about what's, what's stressing you out and you can get a little aggression out because you're going to be, you know, scrubbing the thing. But also you can just, you know, sit there and think about what's going on in your mind and you can get, uh, your thoughts organize better. But the thing with emotional eating is it's just kind of squishy. Again, you don't have the thought, I'm going to go emotionally eat right now. It's just you think I'm hungry right now. And it can be very, very difficult uh, to figure out, you know, are you actually hungry? Are you actually just emotionally wanting to eat right now? And what I found is that ultimately the scale is your friend. Uh, it will tell you, you know, are you emotionally eating or not? Are you eating too much or are you not? And here's what I found. When things are good in my life and things are just, you know, low stress, you know, everything's kind of rocking and rolling. Uh, everybody's healthy. We're, we're all doing good. Uh, finances are in a good place. It's really easy to eat the right amount of food. It just is. But when things are stressful, if, you know, the economy takes a hit or, you know, something is going on with a family member, uh, maybe they're having a, a really hard time or maybe there's even a death in the family, it is really hard to eat the right amount. Or when things are really, really stressful, and I mean like the the, the darkest times that I've had uh, on this weight loss journey where, you know, very close people uh, have died uh, some quite suddenly, uh, I have had times where I feel like I'm eating exactly the right amount. Like I, I get up from the table and I think, well, I certainly didn't overeat. Uh, but then, you know, the scale lets me know, like, no. You're, you're eating too much, you're, you're, you know, because the scale will start to move up. And um, what I found to be the most helpful is to just try to be really humble and, and try to say, OK, you know, even if I don't feel like I'm eating too much right now, I obviously am because the scale is moving up. So and, and, and of course, you know, when I look at my life and if I see like, oh, right, you know, these these things have happened uh, very recently and I'm probably just dealing with that. I'm probably just, you know, emotionally going through a hard time right now uh, and and just giving myself uh, a lot of grace there and saying, OK, uh, you know, I have obviously been doing some emotional eating, uh, and 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 this can happen, by the way. Even just doing OMAD, I have found that it's uh, possible <laughs> to uh, to you know eat too much, to to eat too much, and to gain weight even on OMAD, um, because ultimately, you know, it, it's not super hard to eat too many calories even at one meal. Even if I don't feel like I'm eating too much, I need to, you know, in those cases, pay more attention to the amount, just the general amount of food that I'm eating. Like, OK, normally, you know, when things are good, I'm eating, you know, about this much. Uh, so I need to try to try to just match that, even if my hunger levels are higher. And sure enough, when I start doing that, then the scale, you know, goes back to where it should be and uh, things are good. So if you are currently dealing with emotional eating, just know that this is a thing that you can learn how to deal with and that, you know, you, it takes a while though. I, I have found that this is uh, one of those things that there's a lot of two steps forward, one step back kind of thing. Uh, you may think you've got it under control for a while and then it's like, ah, you know, it kind of sneaks up on you sometimes. Uh, you can be, you know, maybe a little bit blind to stressful situations uh, or, you know, just blind to how much you're eating uh, you, if you're not paying attention. So I hope that you found this episode helpful 
helpful. Thank you for listening and I'll see you in the next one. Do you want to lose the weight without getting rid of the foods you love and that you know you'll go back to eating again anyway? My book, The Laid Back Guide to Intermittent Fasting, teaches you how to practice intermittent fasting so that you lose the weight sustainably and keep it off for good. You can get the audiobook read by me for free when you sign up for your 30-day trial of Audible. The link is in the show notes. And if you've gotten value from this podcast and you'd like to let other people know about it, it'd be great if you could leave a review on either iTunes or wherever you get your podcast. Thanks.